the signal. It's down. Okay. Very good. Good morning. It is good to be here with you on this uh, uh, day when we appreciate air conditioning. It's uh, nice and cool in here and and uh, uh, it feels great. Anyway, it's the uh, third Sunday of July already and uh, summer is zooming by. Um, and there are a few announcements here. Uh, the school drive will begin, uh, school supply drive, the first Sunday of August is, uh, is what the bulletin indicates. And did they, did, Russ, did they set a date for the ice cream social? Okay. I, I, I was just been thinking about ice cream lately. <laughs> I was thinking that this would be a good Sunday for an ice cream social, but uh, anyway. It's uh, good to welcome you here to the worship of the Lord. I don't have a lot of announcements. We do have um, some joys and concerns. We'll get to in a in a moment or two. But uh, anybody have announcements they'd like to share? Yes. No clothes, okay, because I, cl I cleaned out my clothes closet this week, so I won't, okay. Other, uh, Russ, you had an announcement. Yeah, the other announcement was um, the annual church uh, service out at the Old Scratch Church at Bethel Museum. Um, I have to confirm the date, the uh, director's on vacation, but if you would like to make a special offering for the upkeep of the Old Church, Okay. Um, you can give a, a donation or an offering to the old church. It's designated as to the old church, either on the check or on the uh, cash envelope. Thank you. Okay. Any other announcements? Let's stand for our call to worship. Oops. Can't lose that. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Rick Miller. I'd like to welcome you to Spratt United Methodist Church. Everybody's standing as they're able. Um, I will read the light print if you will respond by leading, reading the uh, bold print. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Our first hymn is on page 62 of your hymnal. Yeah. Hymnal? <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. Let's do one, three, and five, since that's what's on the PowerPoint. We're sharing PowerPoint files with Alpina. So I was going to have us sing more verses than that, but, but since that's what we have, we better sing that.
You may be seated. That hymn, if you were to look in your your uh, hymnal, those words were, were penned by St. Francis of Assisi, and uh, the, the date is in the year 1225. Yeah, wow. More than 800 years ago, or about 800 years ago, uh, St. Francis penned that poem and uh, it was put to music. Then in 1925, uh, by William Draper. Uh, but I think it's the oldest hymn in our hymnal. And uh, a, a very creative hymn that speaks of uh, really all of nature giving glory to God, realizing uh, uh, praise and, and glory to God the Creator. Well, um, we have a time for joys, concerns, and, uh, and prayer updates. Uh, Who would like to? to share. Anybody ready? Well, I'm thankful for everybody in this church. I thank God for each of you, and I ask you to pray for my son who's in the hospital having, he had a stroke. Thank you. All right. Certainly uh, hold him in our prayer. Pray for all the refugees who are homeless in the world. When you have to speak right into.
let's, uh, let's, Joshua got back from kayak camp and had a great week, and he was at church in the park this morning. Uh, Pastor Bob Case was the preacher, and uh, he uh, is a fellow I recently met. He's a retired pastor from the Congregational Church, and uh, boy, he's a great guy. He reminds me of my mentor that I, I lost a, a year ago, uh, who passed away, but they're kind of contemporaries, and uh, uh, boy, the similarities are it's one of those things where you, whenever you encounter a person like that, you give God thanks for, for that person and the person they remind you of. <clears throat> uh, so Bob is preaching next week as well at the church in the park, and I'm, I'm, the, uh, I'm the liturgist and children's message bringer. So, um, so uh, I don't always, pr I lead three worship services, kind of, but I, some, I don't always preach three times on a Sunday. So, well, let's join together in, in, uh, in prayer. Almighty God, there are so many things to be thankful for, so many blessings that we take for granted, uh, more numerous than we can possibly count or, or even be aware of. We give you thanks for the opportunity we have to gather in your name and in, uh, in worship, to gather in your spirit, in a spirit of freedom. Lord, we hold the names and the needs that we've lifted up before you in prayer, asking that your Holy Spirit would use our prayers and the prayers of others for healing and comfort and encouragement. Lord, help us to know how we may be part of your answer to someone's prayers. We give you thanks for this day that you've made, for our brothers and sisters in Christ, and for the family of God that has called us to, uh, to take a seat at the table. Lord, we, we again give you thanks for so many things. For the mission and work you've called us to, for Christ's kingdom. May his kingdom be established in our hearts and minds and homes. And may we help that kingdom to, to grow in the lives of others. We hold this hope in Jesus' name as we join in the prayer he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things. Are you ready to bring us the gospel, Rick? I am. Very good. Our scripture reading today is from Matthew, verses 46 through 50. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside, wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciple, he said, these are my mother and my brothers, for whomever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The 
choir would come forward. We ask now that the ushers would help us continue our worship as we present to God our tithes and offerings. Let us pray. 
Gracious God, we give you thanks for the work that you have called us to. And we offer you these, our tithes and offerings, for that work of Christ's kingdom in the world. May it uh, bring your love, your truth, your wisdom, and your grace to the hearts and minds, community and homes in this area. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We have three scriptures uh, this week. The second one is very short. It's from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn is the church's one foundation. And I think we're probably doing one, two, and five on that. Is that right, Ross? Okay, let's stand and sing verses one, two, and five, or whatever appears on the screen. Let's stand. <clears throat> The church is one foundation. Is Jesus Christ her Lord? Shut thy water in the world. In heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. And with the blood he bought her. And from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth. Her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she blesses, partakes one holy on earth hath union with God the three in one and mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one oh happy ones and holy Lord give us grace that we like them the meek and I may dwell with thee. You may be seated. So we had the opportunity to, to share uh, PowerPoint files. And uh, the Alpena Church, because I'm wanting to make sure that I get here on time, I've shortened some verses for their hymns. Uh, and that's why they're appearing shortened here on PowerPoint, uh, that we're not seeing quite as many verses in Alpena and, and uh, as we once did, perhaps. Uh, our second scripture is from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. The context is that uh, Jesus is soon going to be uh, taken from, the, uh, from his disciples uh, he will soon be arrested and, and killed. And uh, he's trying to prepare them for, for that traumatic time. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you. Uh, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may also may be where I am. 
You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. May God bless the reading and holy words of Scripture. You know, I've been meaning to tell you, uh, I understand that the, the, uh, the appointment here, my coming to, to Spratt, uh, happened pretty late. And uh, it's because the conference, uh, I had a little trouble finding the, the right pastor to come here. And uh, the, the bishop was meeting with the cabinet, and, and uh, they said uh, that Pastor Duane has done a good job at Spratt, and the next person is going to have a hard time filling his shoes. And, uh, and they're used to, to uh, his way and, and his humor. And so we have to be careful about who we send to Spratt. And they talked about it, and they said, uh, we'll send our, uh, our, our most tender-hearted pastor there, someone who will really uh, be a shepherd for the people and care about them and, and, uh, uh, and help them adjust. And, and so they called that guy, and he said no. And so they gathered back around the table and, and they said, well, okay, so who do we send to Spratt? And they said, well, maybe we should send them someone who knows the Bible really well. Someone who can, can preach a good Bible sermon that will, will wow them and help them know some of the biblical truths they've met, maybe never heard before. And they agreed and they called him. And he said, no. So they said, well, if we can't send them our, uh, our, our, our most tender-hearted pastor and we can't send them our best preacher, uh, let's, let's, let's send them someone who has a sense of humor a good sense of humor. Maybe, maybe that'll help fill those shoes that the Duane had of, of bringing humor to worship. And uh, and they said, "We'll send them our the pastor we have available who has the best sense of humor." They called him up, and he said, "No." <laughs> and uh, and they said, "Well, what do we do now?" And they said, uh, "Well, if we can't send them." A, a, a good shepherd, and we can't send them a great preacher, and we can't send them a, someone with a sense of humor, let's at least send them someone who's good looking. <laughs> and they called me up, and here I am. All right. Actually, I just couldn't refuse them four times in a row. <laughs> All right. Well, the Bible tells us that Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his public ministry. Now, honestly, that seems kind of late, 30-year-old, to uh, begin his, his uh, ministry as a rabbi. And uh, I've often wondered about that. Uh, for that. For that time in history, for that culture, uh, he would have been a little advanced in years. Bible scholars tell us that, that the gospel, when they examine the gospel, the sequence of, of events in Jesus' life, they, they, they suggest that Jesus and his disciples probably went to Jerusalem for the annual Passover feast three times. And so 
The, the scriptures tell us that Jesus began his ministry when he was about 30 and that his ministry lasted about three years and uh, that Jesus was about 33 years old when he died on a cross and was resurrected in the garden tomb. And we may wonder uh, many things about the life and teachings of Jesus, like why did he wait so long to begin his, his public ministry? And, and they, the short answer to that is, I don't know. Perhaps it has to do with other things that were happening in the world or in, uh, in that setting at the time, we don't know. Traditionally, the, the eldest son would have had the responsibility to take care of his mother if, uh, if she was widowed. And uh, perhaps that's part of it. We don't hear anything of Joseph after Jesus was 12 years old uh, when they went to the temple. The eldest son would have also been perhaps the most likely to have uh, assumed his father's business, Joseph's carpentry work. Uh, in the event that the patriarch of the family had passed. And perhaps that was part of it too. Perhaps Jesus was supporting his family, his mother and siblings. Or perhaps there was something of the unfolding of historical events that, that had to do with it, that made the, the timing of God's plan uh, what it came to be. The rise of the Jewish zealots perhaps, the the rule of Pilate or Herod, or maybe it was coordinated by God for the, the lives of the apostles. Perhaps God had in mind that those specific people needed to be the ones to, to establish and carry on the first century church. Uh, we don't know. But I think it's okay to speculate a bit. There are, uh, there are two concepts of, of time in, in scripture and, and one of them is, is chronos it's, uh, it's measurable time uh, I began my sermon well I began the worship service at uh, uh, at, t at 10 o'clock uh, at 11 o'clock and uh, the, uh, that's measurable time that's a uh, clock is a chronometer I'm 59 and a half years old. That's uh, chronological time. I am, uh, by the way, much more mature in dog years. So, uh, anyway, the, the, the second way of referring to time is kairos. And kairos is God's time. God's time. When things happen in God's time, it can take a while. God is not in a rush. God relates to time differently than we do. Some have suggested that since God created the universe, God is beyond time and space. That God is present with us in time and space, but beyond time and space as well. To God, the scriptures say twice, once in the New Testament, once in the Old Testament. With the day, with the Lord, a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. Sounds like a pretty good riddle to me. Something that's a bit beyond our full ability to comprehend. That's Kairos. That's God's time. There was a, a man who was talking to God. And he said, uh, uh, God, how long is a million years to you? And uh, God answered, to me, a million years is it's about a minute. And the man said, wow. He said, God, uh, how much is a million dollars to you? 
God said, well, to me, a million dollars is, is like a penny. The man said, God, if that's the case, may I have one of your pennies? <laughs> and God said, sure, just a minute. <laughs> All right. I have uh, been pondering Jesus over the years, and I've come to believe that, that Jesus had more than one purpose for being born into this world. His primary purpose was to redeem the world. He was sent as Savior. But Jesus himself acknowledges that there were other reasons he's come into the world. And one of those reasons is to show us who God really is. If I were to have read just a little bit further, and I wish I had included the scripture a little bit farther, uh, verse 8 of that gospel passage in John 14, Philip does a follow-up question after Thomas uh, had asked his question. Philip says, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you for such a long time, three years is a, a fair amount of time to travel with someone day to day. And Jesus says, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you are not my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, says Jesus. The first best thing that I know about Jesus Christ that I want to share with you today is that Jesus and the Heavenly Father are one. They are one. That Jesus is what God looks like wearing sandals. You guys didn't get that one. They, they, they laughed in Alpina at that a little bit. People have tried for thousands of years to describe who God is and what God is like, and frankly, they haven't always done the best job. So Jesus came to teach us and to show us who God really is. And that takes time. Time with us. Chronos time. A lifetime of perhaps 33 years. The second best thing uh, that I know about Jesus is that Jesus is my brother. He said it first. He said it more than once. I, I think of that occasion on Easter morning where Jesus is, uh, in, in John chapter 20, where Jesus is, is encountering Mary. And after she gives him a giant bear hug, he says to her, Mary, go and tell the others that I'm going to my God and your God, to my Father and your Father. to his father and our father. We, we are family. Jesus is our brother. Today in the scripture that, that Rick read, it's an intriguing passage. It's one of the most intriguing in the scripture. It's, it's early in Jesus' ministry, and, uh, and he's been healing, and he's been casting out demons and doing miracles, and... Uh, uh, there's another version of the story recorded in the Gospel of Mark. And, and what Jesus has been teaching has offended the Pharisees. They don't like it. And Jesus casts out a demon on the Sabbath day. And they don't like that either. And for the Pharisees, they have this belief. Nobody can do miracles except if they're a man of God. And Jesus is doing miracles. 
but they don't agree with what Jesus is doing. So they've got a dilemma here, and they've got to come up with some explanation. They've either got to change what they believe about God, or they've got to explain away what Jesus has done. And unfortunately, they choose the latter. They say, if he's casting out a demon, he must do it by the power of a stronger demon. He must have a more powerful demon than him. And there was a rumor going around that Jesus had lost his mind. Well, 30 years old, been a carpenter all his life, and suddenly he takes to preaching and doing fantastic things and casting out the demonic. And, and, and what he's teaching about God is different than what they've heard all along. And the Pharisees are saying he's got a demon, and his family's worried about him. And the rumor is he's either got a demon or he's lost his mind. And they come to get him, take him away, to save himself, save him from himself. His mother, his brothers. And he's teaching in this house. And because word of his miracles have spread all over, the house is full. And it's surrounded. And everybody wants to hear Jesus and see Jesus and probably ask for a, a favor, a miracle, a healing. And uh, here come Jesus' mom and brothers. And, and, and they want to get in to see him. And, uh, and the crowd says, hey, Jesus, your, your mom and brothers are here. And Jesus isn't having any of it because he knows what they have in mind, and it's not the mission of God. So Jesus says, who are my mother and brother and sisters? Those who do the will of my heavenly Father, that's my mother and my brothers and my sisters. Jesus invites us to become part of his family, to be a sister with Christ, to be a brother with Christ, to know God as our Heavenly Father. And, and that's the second best thing that I can tell you today about Jesus is that Jesus is our brother. So the first best thing is that, that Jesus and the Father are one. That God cared enough to, to come and be with us to demonstrate God's love physically, tangibly, to walk with us and eat with us and pray with us because we can't always relate to a God who, with whom a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. Those are beyond our comprehension. But, but we know what love is. And Jesus showed the love of God really well those years. And the second best thing is that Jesus is our brother. And the third best thing is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. Yes. That we can count on him to be who he says he is and that that doesn't change that he is our savior, that he's our brother, that he's our Lord, that he's, he's our friend, that he's our teacher, that we can count on him because he is the same yesterday and today and forever. Probably one of the greatest laws of the universe is that everything changes. And I don't like change all that well. I like things, when I get them the way I like them, I like them to stay that way. <laughs> and I just hate it when I, when I find out that one of my favorite restaurants is closed down after 35 years or, or something like that, or they change the recipe. In this world, things change. Jesus Christ does not change. He is the same 
yesterday, today, forever. He is that solid rock that we can count on. And, and I, I need that solid rock to count on. I, I need that, that foundation, that strength, that security to know that he's there when I need him. So do you. He is who he says he is as the savior of the world, as, as God's word embodied. As the prince of peace, the prophesied by Isaiah, the prince of shalom, that he's the Lord of love, that he is the grace of God given for us. That doesn't change. It doesn't change. Many things may end. Many things will change. But Jesus Christ remains the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Isaiah prophesied that he'd be called Emmanuel. He'd be called, his title, God with us. God with us. That's who Jesus is. He and the Father are one, and he, He's claimed us as His siblings. And that'll never change. God's love is many times in the Scriptures pledged, promised, as steadfast and everlasting. Steadfast means strong. Everlasting is... Is beyond our concept of durability. So those are the three best things that I can tell you today about God, about Jesus, that he and the Father are one, and he is our brother, and he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. We have a closing hymn to sing. Pass it on, I believe. Uh, let's stand and sing. Anybody here remember singing that at camp? Yeah, wow. I, uh, I picked that song several times a year probably and every time it, it brings back memories and, and uh, brings a tear to my eye. Uh, that God 
reached out and found me and brought me back. And uh, claimed me as uh, one of his dearly loved children, like you. God's still doing that. And we have the privilege to, uh, to name that invitation for another person. Uh, I, hope, uh, I hope that's something that you have the courage to do. I wouldn't be here today if, if my sister had uh, asked me to, to, to come to church with her to a, a youth dance on the district. Uh, and after that, I was hooked. Uh, anyway, Paul says we are ambassadors for Christ. I, I hope sometime you've had the joy of, of offering that to somebody. Or we'll take that as a, a heartfelt prayer challenge. We Methodists used to be really good at that back in the day. Uh, we've gotten out of the habit of that. Let's go forth with the benediction. God's love is steadfast and everlasting. God's grace is sufficient for our every need. And God has promised to be with us always, never to leave us or forsake us. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>